Welcome to the 8 plus 10 podcast. Uh, and this is actually number 50. Christian? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not that good at numbers after all. young producer changed that to uh, from 49. And I'm glad you did, David, because we were uh, definitely wrong last week. We were celebrating already while it's yeah. now. We like to celebrate. Yeah, we do it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes for a reason. Uh, today, we have... We have quite some stuff on the table, we so do. we yeah. just run into uh, several things that you are going to, that we're going to check with you today. Mm -hmm. um, if you like it, please start by subscribing. Then you get all the updates for number fifty-one True. up until the the, the hundreds that we're uh, planning to do. So please and check us on uh, Instagram Daily Watch Eight Past Ten, Christian Hagen. You know why I wanted it to be episode fifty-two. No. Because that means we've done a full year of weekly podcasts. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. So 52 is actually a very important number. Talking about numbers. Uh, no, we're not talking about numbers. We're talking about what we love so much. Watches. Watches. And watch locks. Let's get back to that. Let's get back to that. Let's. Uh, 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 what I bring to the table is a watch that you know I appreciate. Yes. It's this one. Yeah. It's the Louis Erard. Collaboration with Alain Silberstein. Yeah, and I have a weak spot for Alain Silberstein because for me he is, uh, yeah, one of the archetype nineties. Yes, uh, and, and watchmakers. I would say watch designers. Yeah. he is he is a Bauhaus type of design. If you mm. see the man, he has this beautiful mustache. He is really Schnurrbart. He's an artist. Yeah, and I love artists. He's still alive. Art. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. He ran his own brand from the early 90s until 2012. Then he stopped because his uh, creations, they were very much like this, but a bit more complicated yeah. and also way more expensive. So he was really on the high-end side in terms of pricing. But in recent years, he, su he uh, surprised us with uh, a collaboration with uh, MBNF at some point. Yeah. And with Louis Erard yeah. in a completely different price range. What is the price of that beauty? There are actually two. Uh, it's available with the white dial and with the black dial. And they're both in steel. And the black dial, like this one, is a PVD. Yeah, so that's a steel without PVD, right? Yes, the, okay. the white one is steel without PVD. The okay. white uh, without PVD is 2800 Swiss. And this that's one is 2900. Good. That's pretty decent. And what I like about it, it... it I think that sometimes when we discuss watches in our industry and with the, with our colleagues and with the fans, we are sometimes a bit too serious. We are so serious in discussing the trade, in discussing the collecting, etc. And this brings it back to what it actually also should be, fun. It's just fun. This is a fun watch at a very fun price. So and it's quite limited, uh, one hundred seventy-eight pieces of both. Do you know why? Is uh, it uh, the age of the brand or no? Not, not, not it's, it's. I don't know if it's a random number, but I don't know the specific uh, definition of the number. Okay. Probably they will come up with something else uh, in, in next years. So it's <laughs> see. Yeah, and that was I, my I, take this week. I know what you that you really like this watch because you actually bought one. You bought the steel one with the white dial, right? No. Oh no. I thought you did. I could buy this one. This one, the, the black. I, oh, I you want the black the, the one? Black ah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, Sorry yeah. about that. So this is actually your watch. Yeah. Aha! Well, I can beat you with that one because I brought my watch. I think it's bigger. <laughs> it's slightly bigger, <laughs> but you know what it also is? It's also a lot of fun and colors. And with the wandering hours. Yeah. I give you the... Uh, Gorilla Watch Drift. I just saw it for the first time. Yeah. And I really like it. It's a cool watch. Yeah. It has the wandering hours. Of course, you have that from the AP Star Wheel. You have the Moza, what's it called? Yeah, flying. Um, Something like that. Yeah, you have yeah. it from the very early Wovax, uh, where you actually show the hours on the discs and uh, you have the minutes and seconds on the Art Fang. This is forged carbon fiber. This is titanium, this is aluminum, and this is green ceramic. This is around to $3,200. What? It's a Vaucher developed, manufactured uh, module with the wandering hours. $3,200. So, these two fine 
Very fun watches. It's comparable. This one you take when you go out in the bush. This mm -hmm. one you take when you go to a museum. No, I think I would take <laughs> this if I took a pee in the bush because it takes you a little while to go, what time is it? But then again, it so it does on my Faciona. It's strange to 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 read the time on it's this. It's difficult, one. and actually, that's also a comparison with the with the the, uh, the Louis Erard because I forgot to mention it's a regulateur, so it's, it's also non-conventional in Absolutely. telling time. Yes, um, that's good. This is manual wound, right? Yeah, this is automatic. Okay, they're priced pretty much equally. Yeah, they're for completely different wrists and taste sets. But let us know which one you like the better, Louis Erard with uh, Alain Simplestein, or the Gorilla Watches with the Wandering Hours called Drift. You won't see this comparison anywhere else in the watch industry, but we just do it. Yeah, and this one is limited to 350 pieces. Okay, also limited. And this yeah. one is limited to 178. So these are our private watches. We have one more. Yeah. A German brand called Hanhardt. Actually, today, well, yesterday I received the, uh, a press release from uh, the Rake, or Revolution, my dear friend Waco, he just released a watch that was worn by Steve McQueen. So he released a new version of the Steve McQueen Hanhardt Chronograph watch in bronze. 150 Sorry. pieces. Cool thing is, you can if you buy the watch, you can also choose to buy the Bellstaff jacket, the trial master that Steve McQueen wore during a motorcycle race in the 50s. 60s, hey, you're a Bellstaff like fan, right? I, I have the exact yeah. same jacket that actually when I was driving my MC the last couple of days, which were really cold, I wore the, exactly that jacket. Yeah. So I was like, well, I, I guess I only want the watch, but fuck it, I want a new Bellstaff jacket as well. Yeah, but you, t you told me this morning and I checked yeah. the, 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 the rake side of the Revolution side. It's 2,300 US dollars, including the jacket. Y is it? Yeah. 1900 excluding and for 400 extra, which yeah. is a discount, you get the jacket included. Uh, I mean, a uh, that's a no-brainer. Yeah, sure, sure. I, I talked to Wei last night, but I forgot to ask him how, how it actually went off. Because I also I also went back to uh, the Revolution Watch uh, website. Yeah. I guess I should have gone to the rake instead. I, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find the watch on offer. Okay. So I guess it was sold out within two shakes of a lamb's tail. Again. Uh, which was also with the sin. Yeah. That was $2,500. Yeah, they're, they're doing something right at the revolution. 150 pieces priced like that with great stories. Again, of course, there were some hating that a gentleman wrote, why are you selling a watch from a guy that beat up his wife? And uh, you, do you want to talk about hate on social media today? <laughs> Let's not go there. Let's, <laughs> let's, there. let's stick to the watches. But let's, uh, this Hanhardt is also limited. Yeah. 105 pieces. I believe it's inspired by a legendary Swedish fighter plane from Saab. From Saab. Yeah. And the funny thing is, uh, Alexander, one of our producers, he's sitting over there. He loves this watch. Alexander? I mean, yeah. yeah. This, is, this is his kind of watch. And every time I look at it, I think, oh, I don't even see. And... That's because IWC owns that pilot watch look. What yeah. do you think? It was not my first take, IWC, to be honest. I like it. Uh, to be honest, I think it's a bit anonymous for me. Yeah. But on the other hand, it takes everything right. It's 40 millimeters. It's the right size. Yeah. It is the right thickness. It's, it's, I, I love Hanhardt. It's a good I do brand. too. And it was a bit like the, the uh, one of my favorite Rolexes that you owned. Um, um. How can you forget a favorite? It's like, I yeah, love my wife and her so name is... Many, yeah. oh, what's her name? What's her name? The Air King. <laughs> oh, the Air King. That's a cool that's, watch. That's inspired by uh, a clock from an airplane, right? Uh, no, yeah. No, actually from a Bloodhound, which was a car. As a car, okay. The project is, uh, I think it was in chapter 11, around December 18. Yeah. But the watch is still produced, and the clocks that were actually on the dashboard inside the Bloodhound car. Ah, okay. That was resembled on the dial of the Air King. So, okay. according to the article that I wrote myself, they needed some manual, uh, not only digital instrumental, so they wanted some manual, some analog instruments inside the cockpit of, of the Bloodhound, sponsored uh, and developed by Rolex. Okay. 
Well, this that that was the similarity I thought because thought because this one is also inspired by the the, the instrument yeah. clusters in the yeah. in the Saab yeah. uh, uh, fighter jet. Absolutely. If you look into the cockpit of a of a Saab fighter jet, you will find this dial layout uh, at the dashboard. Absolutely. Yeah. It's funny. I've never been in a Saab fighter yet. I've been in many Saabs in, yeah. in the past. But that was more like the Saab Cabriolet, but that's it's, it, different than uh, a fighter yet. You don't use a clutch in a Saab car. You just change the gear. Yeah, it's strange. It's strange. And when you unlock it with the key, the ignition key... Down here. ...is down here. So strange. It's Yeah, it's 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 a pity that Saab is not existing anymore. Because it's, it's a uh, shame, but you can still buy a very nice Cabriolet, and you can still get parts rather cheap. Yeah. For, for another money. decade yeah. or something yeah. like that. Okay, anyway. we had uh, the Hanhardt, we had the Gorilla, the Louis Erard. Um I made a lock. Uh, there's something going on. There today is something with going you. On. Yeah. <laughs> we launched the Luxury Watch Lock. Yes. And I <laughs> I had what you might call a very busy morning. Because I released some pictures on my Instagram account. Yeah. Uh, with uh, some of my watches uh, you know having this I have to say it. It's comfortable. I can't even. I, I can't feel wearing it. So for three years, a good friend of mine called Bo, he actually developed this. So we were like seven prototypes in. It's not uncomfortable at all, and it's cheap too. But I do. I'm. I have to admit, a lot of the comments. There was a lot of hate. Yeah. But also, there were a lot of constructive criticism. Be like, wh- why? And. People who have never heard of a friend who lost a watch or a friend who's had a thief's nick off uh, or some street magician and all of a sudden your watch yeah. is gone. Yeah. If they have never heard of that before, why would they even bother? You don't see the problem. I yeah. completely understand and respect that. But That's I think this is, this is your podcast, your podium. I think one what what I saw and, and all the, 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 the bashing aside, you mm-hmm. can neglect that there are... There's praise and there's criticism. Sure. And I think that the, one of the most common questions is what, what you were already mentioning as well is why? Yeah. What is the purpose of this? Absolutely. And I think now, right now you you can perfectly explain. Yeah. And I show. mean, you, you can't open this clasp. I mean, this <laughs> has the strength of 60 newtons. I don't even know how much one is, but 60, that's a lot, right? You don't want that pressure on your wrist, I guess. No, uh, <laughs> no but it's, I mean, we've been through so many prototypes, and uh, this is actually produced by Hirsch, the Austrian strap yeah. uh, maker, uh, and they've been involved for about a year and a half. So they've been through our prototypes, so we do this in leather and rubber. So this is uh, advertising my uh, Luxury watch lock. I can do that because it's our platform. You yeah. can do that. And, yeah. and there are many questions, and probably uh, uh, you can convince some people here. Um, is it, it, it is for uh, uh, bracelets, right? Yeah, not for straps, because you can open them in a, in a whole different manner, uh, the straps, because they have a different uh, clasp, C, C buckle, if you yeah. want, the atelier. Yeah. So you have to have some kind of, of uh, integrated bracelet lock in but, order to keep it on your wrist. But having said that, every bracelet from every brand it is... Uh, it's usable. Most, Most. modern okay. watches. Okay. I'm wearing on a 1981 uh, Oyster bracelet here, and it fits like Hansel and Gretel. Okay. Very easy. I understand the criticism. I do. I really do. But I also appreciate people understanding it. There was a gentleman from Stockholm who said, yeah, I lost my oars that way. It just disappeared from my wrist when I was out and about town. Yeah. So, hey... Don't lose your watch, man. Well, I think we, we all know what the problem is. That is in all the major cities in the world, especially mm-hmm. in the major cities in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the, the, the thieves are... I saw this this uh, little video last week about uh, a theft in Hong Kong, ripping off the, 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 the watch. Was it a Richard Mill? I don't know. Somebody claimed it was a Richard Mill. Okay, I just saw the, the video. And then, then you see it, it happens. You, you can think, well, it will not happen to me because I'm very careful and sure, I always sure. look at my watch. But yeah. it happens. It does. Yeah. It does. A good friend of mine, he lost, that was actually my old watch, my old Frizzione. He was out surfing and he calls me about, hey, hey man, I, um, if you go diving that and that surf spot, you know, you're probably going to find your old watch. I'm like, what, what do you mean? I kind of lost it while surfing. 
Ah, so that's I haven't thought Idiot. of that angle. It's not necessarily for for theft. It's also for this kind of situations. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Where you don't want your watch. Nobody fun. wants to lose their watch. No, no matter sure. sports or theft, you don't want to lose your watch. Preciosos. So we have a topic as well, but we talked about that before, right? Yeah, that's that's that's. Uh, we talk about that work a lot. <laughs> yeah. Do we have some numbers we want to share? Besides that, this is number 49. Of, oh, no, this is 50. No, this is 50. number 50. Yeah. And uh, I'm 50, you're 50. So that makes 150. <laughs> <laughs> you want numbers, you get Jesus numbers. God, that's 150. <laughs> you're fast with the numbers, boss, man. I was wrong uh, last week, so I have to, to uh, correct that. Recap myself. Absolutely. Uh, Listen, I have to ask because once this is aired, we're getting awfully close to Geneva watch days. Are we going or are we not going? Yes, we are going. Excellent. Yes, 8 past 10, uh, Daily Watch, uh, the whole team is going. Yeah. To meet up with, uh, uh, yeah, hopefully a lot of novelties. Yeah. In a different way. It's Very decentralized. Different. It's. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward how brands cope with it. Yeah. Uh, we have to say it's especially, it's not all the brands. It's it's Breitling, it's Bulgari. It's uh, a, a serious group of high-end indies. Sure. MBNF, Chapek, yeah. uh, the, the, the many are there. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think it's the first physical outing uh, since Corona. I it, Am I right? Uh, I came home on March 5th from Zurich. Yeah. I have not been in an airplane since. So, six months. Yeah. Yeah, for me too. And yeah. I think for Alex too, we, we that was in February the last time. So it yeah. is, yeah. I really look forward just to to just to touch base to see the guys and yeah. the, and, and the girls from from the brands to yeah. to see uh, some novelties to yeah. Well, that said, you know we we get a lot of watches sent to us to the office. Yeah, but I kind of miss them being presented by the brand managers. Sure. That's huh? what you need to know. You need yeah. to know why they did it, and they can explain that themselves. Yeah, better than we do. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, one of the next episodes. I'm not sure if it will be uh, after uh, number fifty one or fifty two, but we might even consider doing a podcast from Geneva. But yeah. that's not that's out in the stars. We don't know yet if that will happen. True. But at least we will get a lot of input there. Yes, sir. To fill uh, new episodes. Stay tuned. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.